push that rock here with Simpson Math. This is a short video on the graphing the inverse trig functions. Specifically, I'm going to graph the inverse tangent function. Okay, so here's a reminder of what the tangent wave looks like. Here's one cycle of the tangent wave. And I have conveniently graphed it uh, over the uh, domain restriction that allows it to pass the horizontal line test. I haven't put a second cycle to the right or a second cycle to the left because if I did, it would fail the horizontal line test. So when we talk about the inverse trig functions, we have to restrict the domain of the uh, original function. And in this case, we restrict the domain of tangent to be uh, less than pi halves but greater than negative pi halves. For sine, we do the same, except it's less than or equal to pi halves or greater than or equal to negative pi halves. And then for cosine, the restriction is from zero to pi. Okay, so anyway, you graph the original trig function over the domain restriction so that it passes the horizontal line test. And you make a table of values. There they are. Now. Tangent's kind of special because it has the acetope. So where I have this arrow here, I mean, as the graph goes, as the domain goes to negative pi halves, in this case, from the right, the graph goes down to negative infinity. And as the graph goes to pi halves from the left, as we go to pi, as the domain values, the input values go to pi halves, the graph goes up to infinity. You won't have that problem on sine and cosine because they're always defined. But what do you do? The inverse function switch swatches the x's and y's. It switch swatches the inputs and the outputs. So the inputs become outputs and the outputs become inputs. What does that mean? That means like for a point like this, this input negative pi fourths becomes an output and this output negative one becomes the input. Zero, zero will switch. This zero goes over here and this zero goes over here. Oh, we get the same point. This pi force becomes an output. This input, this output one becomes an input. Now for this, the same thing happens. The graph will tend to go, as the graph, as the inputs tend to go to negative infinity, the graph's outputs will tend to go towards negative pi halves. Same thing here. As the inputs go to negative, uh, go to positive pi halves, as the inputs go to positive pi halves, on this graph, the outputs will go to positive pi halves. Then the outputs on the tangent wave, we're going to, neg uh, we're going to positive infinity, but on the arc tangent wave, that means the inputs will be going to positive infinity. So as the inputs go to positive infinity, the graph will be going to pi halves, okay? So here we have vertical asymptotes at negative pi halves and pi halves. That means on the Inverse, there will be horizontal asymptotes at uh, negative infinity and infinity, but the, they're horizontal, so therefore the y value is important. So the, as the inputs go to negative infinity, the outputs will get closer to negative pi halves. So our uh, horizontal asymptote will be at negative pi halves and at pi halves. So I'm going to graph those first. Let's make this, notice our outputs are pi fours, pi fours, pi halves. So I'm gonna make this pi fours and this pi halves. So here's negative pi fours, negative pi halves. And I will graph the asymptotes. So there'll be an asymptote here. So as we go, as the inputs go to negative infinity, the graph is gonna to go to negative pi halves. And there'll be an asymptote here. As the inputs go to infinity, can we see that? Yeah. As the inputs go to infinity, the outputs will go to pi halves. So I have my asymptotes. So now I'm ready to graph the function. So I'll just plot these points. At, when x is a negative one, y is a negative pi fourths. So I go over here to, let's make this one. So here's a negative one, there's a negative pi fourths. Zero, zero. When x is zero, y is zero. When x is 1, y is pi 4, so I'll go over 1 and up pi 4. And then remember, it's going to approach this. As the x values go to infinity, it's going to get closer to pi halves. 
And as the X values get closer, go out to negative infinity, the Y values are gonna get closer to negative pi halves. So we have a graph that looks like that. And this is your arctangent wave. Of the three, of the three inverse functions, arc sine, arc cos, and arc tan, this one <laughs> turns out to be really important in calculus, we keep running across it over and over again. So this is one for sure you need to practice and uh, understand what it looks like to be ready for calculus. Math made simple, Simpson math.